Hello, my name's Tragic O'Hara, and today I'm going to talk about my first year on YouTube. Let's set the scene. So I've been doing this a year, but my channel's older than that. Like, I've been making videos consistently for a year. Like, before that, when I was playing music, I'd upload, like, music videos and maybe, like, maybe two, three minutes kind of clips of things that I've painted and stuff. Nothing with me talking. No linear narrative, just random stuff that I'd made and things. So last year, December the 9th, was the first video uploaded to YouTube, uh, which was the first episode of the Tragical Mystery Tour. It's been a year. It's been a mad year. <laughs> to be fair, for everyone, but it's been a year I've been making YouTube videos, so I thought I'd make a video about my first year, and some of the stuff I've learned, some of the stuff that was good, some of the stuff that wasn't so good, the whole thing, the whole thing, I've split it up into five sections, and I'll give you some of my wisdom in between the bits, but let's just start at the bit where, that everyone wants to know, everyone wants to know this, and that is, how much money did you make from YouTube, this will be easy, nothing, nothing, not a thing, not a penny, right? Not a penny has been made from YouTube and I'll tell you why. I have the amount of subscribers I need. I need I've need. i got over a thousand subscribers but I don't have the watch hours. Right now I have 1,549 watch hours. I need 4,000 to be monetized. That's not the end goal though, but that's what everyone wants to know. Whenever you watch something like this, people want to know, how much money did you make? Nothing, not a bean. However, I suppose in marketing, this is called brand awareness. More people are aware of the things I do now that I make these videos. So my phone has been ringing a bit more. Although I haven't made any money from YouTube through AdSense, like more people know what it is I do. Like that's where the money's came from. That's been the benefit of doing YouTube. Like I've, I've had no brand deals, I've had nothing like that. I haven't been looking for them. Like I don't even know how you would go about doing it and stuff. Like I'm not, and to be honest, like, if it, ha if it happens, it happens. Like, but that's not the reason I'm making these videos. The reason I'm making them is because I enjoy it. That's the main reason. So I've made nothing. Not a bean. Not one cent has came from YouTube. And I'm fine with that. Maybe if I'm five years down the line and I still haven't made any money um, from AdSense, I'd be a bit, I'd have a bit of a grievance. It's been a year. I wasn't expecting it to go a million subscribers in a year. That's unrealistic, especially with what, the way I make things, do you know what I mean? So there you go. That's how much money I've made. Nothing. Nada. But when I started YouTube, I had, like, before I'd done all the other stuff, like, I had maybe about 200 odd subscribers, maybe. As it stands, I have 1,095 subscribers, which is amazing. Like, I'm over the moon with that. I set a goal this year to have 1,000 subscribers by today. And I've done it. That's great. I will never set another subscriber goal again. Never. And I'll tell you why. I can see how that would make you miserable worrying about getting 10,000. Like, see when next number, like whatever, I'm not even thinking about it. That number, I'm trying not to think about that because I don't want my happiness and enjoyment wrapped up in a number that I have no control over. That's the thing. I have no control over that number. I've got friends, really good friends, who have messaged, they went, I've been watching your videos for six months and I've literally just subscribed there. I'm so sorry. Like, and that's fine. I cannot make you do anything. That's the truth. And I don't mean that in a bad way. The, what I mean is, I can't make you subscribe to my channel. Therefore, if I set 10,000 subscribers as a goal, I'm trying to force you to do something. I don't think I explained that very well. What I mean is, for me to chase a number of subscribers, I will need to drastically change the way that I make videos and chase popular subjects, look for search terms and keywords and stuff like that for people to subscribe to me, to chase a number. If I chase a number of subscribers, I will need to change the way I make stuff. And I like the way I make stuff, so I don't want to change it. I will constantly be pushing for a number that I've made up. Like I've made up that 10,000 is a good number to have. After 10, what will it be? A hundred? And then after a hundred, what will it be? A million? So will I, when I get 10,000 subscribers, will I be satisfied? Will that be me go, cool, YouTube's completed? Probably not. Whereas that isn't essentially how the thousand fan theory works. And that's what I talked about. That's what I've, I've made videos about. The thousand fan, thousand fan, the thousand, the thousand fan theory is about having the people who really like what you do. Like that's what they want and they want to watch what you do rather than trying to appeal to a million people. Just making stuff 
and putting it out there and sharing it enough and trying to get it in the right circles, trying to get it to the right people. There is a bit of strategy involved. Like I'm not, you have to have a bit of strategy and stuff, right? The number of people that I, I, I can't, I don't know how to describe it. Like, this is what I'm struggling. I know what it is in my head, but try to get it out in words. Is I have no control. That's it. I have no control over whether or not you subscribe to my channel, right? I don't, I have no control over that. The same way, like, I have no control over what YouTube decide to do with their algorithm. Like, if the internet was just to break tomorrow, I have no control over that. So if I fixate on things, if I fixate on goals that really I don't have much in the way of control over, then it's going to lead to a place of, not a positive place, for me anyway, I don't think it's going to send me to a positive place. So I'm choosing goals that I have control over. For example, the Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds thing. That's a goal of mine. It depends on me building the model and it depends on me photographing the thing and telling people about it. That's on me. Now, if I make all that and I send it to one person and they go, not for me, then it's on to the next person. The only bit that's out within my control is trying to convince people that they want to do it. But I only need to convince one. I don't need to convince 10,000. I just need to convince one person to do that. The, the, the higher percentage of me completing the goal or achieving the goal is on me, not on someone else. That's what I mean. I think, <laughs> I think that's what I mean. I just know that chasing a number is not what I want to chase. I want to chase the walrus, right? That's, that's it. And I think if I'm chasing the walrus and other people want to see the chase and all that kind of thing, Great, that's fantastic, I, 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 brilliant, like I, I can't explain how happy that makes me, but the number of subscribers isn't what I want, that's what I mean. I have done this before where I've chased stuff like that and it makes me miserable. I can do it for a bit and then I, I hate it, I wake up one day and I'm like, I'm over it because I don't see, so if I do that every day for a year, if I make a video a day, if I go full Casey Neistat, right, and I make a video a day within Three weeks I'll be miserable. Guaranteed. I know my attention span better than anyone. I will be miserable if I chase that stuff. That's the most likely way to get 10,000 subscribers is to create videos constantly. And I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. I don't. I really don't. So I'm not going to do that. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. <sighs> A week I've been thinking about how to explain that. A week. And I still don't know if I've done it right. A thousand was an, was enough that I could have done it. But listen, like honestly, there was a point looking at five and going, this is never going to happen. And that was affecting how I was thinking about what I was wanting to make. So been in it, like that goal's gone. I don't. I, I genuinely believe it's damaging to put your happiness in the hands of others, but also by a number. What does a number mean? Like. And, and also, like, you, maybe you wouldn't think this by looking at me, but I'm not the biggest fan of Ed Sheeran, okay? If you like Ed Sheeran, that's fine. You do you. I don't particularly like him. He was the number one streaming artist of last decade. I prefer Bob Dylan. There you go. Do you know what I mean? When it comes to someone playing an acoustic guitar, Neil Young, I prefer him. You know what I mean? Like, that. that's the thing. If you want to argue with who's better, Ed Sheeran or Bob Dylan, like... Now, if it was based on numbers, then Ed Sheeran would be better. But it's Bob Dylan, you know what I mean? Like, so anyway, that's musical preference doesn't come into it, but that's what I mean. A number doesn't define how good you are, so that's why I won't be setting that goal next year, because I think it would make me miserable. But the people that are watching, the people that are watching the videos, in the last 365 days, 1,600 hours of the stuff I've made has been watched. I'm going to measure that number. Like if people are watching, then like that, I'm into that. That's what the number I'm going to look at. To, what, to think that people have watched 1,600 hours of the things I've made this year. Like I'm, I'm happy with that. That's cool. I want to make a thing where people come back and go, I wonder what he's doing now. I wonder what's next. Like that's, that's my thinking. I want to make stuff that people want to watch. Like a, like a running series kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? I think, right? So yeah, I was shocked at this. I just looked this up on, like went on my YouTube analytics and started looking this. The now, the only number I've Really looked at all year was the subs. I've not really looked at anything else, which was stupid because I, I should have. But 7.7% .7 of the people on my channel have turned on the notification bell. I haven't asked anyone to do that. Not once. Like I've never said that. It's too YouTubey for me. Like I've not, <laughs> I've not said that. So to have 7.7% .7 of the people have done that. That's cool. The average is 10%. Like that's amazing. Like that's off people's own backs. Like, um, but that's what I mean. I can't make people do anything. Like I could say the now. 
turn on the notification bell and you don't do it. Like if I look at that number next year and I'm like, oh no, that's the, I can't make you do it. Like I can only make myself say it. That's kind of what I'm getting at. And then there's another number that I don't really know what it means. Subscribers who turned on all notifications to your channel and enable YouTube notification. I don't really know what that other number means, so, but it's 4.7%, like, and the average is five. What was it? Typical is five to 20. Below average, my teachers were right. <laughs> this is the bit, this bit blew my mind, right? I don't really know where people are watching from in the world, but I've got people in here, the Scotland, United Kingdom, the United States, Germany, Canada, Australia, Brazil, Kenya, Mor Morocco, Belgium, Indonesia, India, the United Arab Emirates, which might be my sister because she lives in Dubai, um, <laughs> the Netherlands and Turkey. That's mental. That's crazy. Like I genuinely like, it's like 15 percent of the people are watching from the United States. That's crazy, man. Like I put off making YouTube videos because of my accent for so long because I thought no one would understand me. I'm quite broad. I'm from a place in Scotland called Ayrshire, which is um, the Earth's End. That's probably the way it's said. It's, it's not a big place. Like it's got the biggest population is Glasgow, but spread out over three shires, like Lord of the Rings. Like it's a, uh, it's, do you know what I mean? I'm from nowhere, but everyone's from nowhere to a certain extent. You know what I mean? Like, so I didn't think people would watch would be be it would be able to understand me, but even the YouTube subtitle thing is recognizing more what I say. So this isn't my prop. Like I'd slow down what I say on purpose, because I need to. Like if I went through Ayrshire, no one would know. No one would know what I was saying. Let me know. Like I don't usually ask people to do this, but let me know where you're watching from. Like put it in the comments. Like I can't. I knew I had a couple of people in America and a couple of people in different places watching and stuff, but I had no idea that there was like as big a number as what there is. Like that's cool. That's amazing. Like like I'm in cool winning. <laughs> it's it's kind of mind blown a wee bit. So 91.7% of people are watching this with no subtitles. Good for you. Good on you. You can understand Scottish people. That's a talent, by the way. Put that in your CV. I am thrilled that people are watching what I do, and it's crazy. I have made, what's the best way to describe this, right? I have made a lot of videos this year, but I have made 27 videos that are within the tragical universe. <laughs> like it's the story so far, do you know what I mean? It took me a year to figure out where I'm going and what I want to do. So, but there's 27 in the binge it playlist that I have up that kind of tell the story so far to this point. And if someone was to go back and watch that, read these 27 videos that tell a story. The most watched is the tutorial that I made about spray painting a portrait. That has something like 8,000 odd views on it. So there's a bit on YouTube where it says, key moments for audience retention. So the the one that I was most nervous about putting out, like I was like, oh, if this could work or not, was the Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds plan of attack thing. That is number one on the key moments for audience retention. I did not expect that and I'm happy about that. That's the stuff I want to do. Choose a goal that's a, a hard goal. I'm sure the whole process, every single bit of figuring it out, the money, the try to make it, uh, figure this out, that, all the thing, all the bits of the jigsaw that need to fall into place for it to work. So the fact that that's up there, that's cool. Something worked, <laughs> right? I'm not going to talk about my least watched video because I haven't really looked. What I'm going to talk about is, I'm, my, not my least watched video, but the video that I think didn't click was my, what I will do to survive the coronavirus lockdown thing. Basically it was me hitting things in the garage when I was in the garage to make a song and then off the back of that, I put a thing out on my Facebook and my Instagram and stuff and said, send me you hitting something and I'll make a song out of it. And I made day two videos. Um, and I, th I would like, I really enjoyed making the videos. But the reason I don't think they worked as well is because there was no story involved. Like there was no, it just appeared out of nowhere. There was no, this is what I'm going to do. And now I've learned that's how to do it. That's how you make a video is this is what I'm going to do and here's the story. This is why. The why's got to be there, um, and the why wasn't in those videos. I have thought about going back and making a why, and then putting those videos in a playlist so they kind of make sense, kind of like what I've what I done with the, the band thing, like my old band demo, kind of like that. But it's not high in my list of priorities, if I'm honest with you. But that one of the things I've learned is that there needs to be a story. Why are you doing this rather than just dropping it in out of nowhere? I've learned that lesson, whether I actually learn it and continue to do it is a different thing. <laughs> 
altogether. This is the most creative I think I've ever been in my life because when I was playing music, it was only music and making videos. Like, and I made a couple of videos, like for example, maybe the only other time would have been when I was doing the jump on thing. Just a quick recap for anyone that doesn't know. I made a music video for a song that I'd written um, of me dancing down Glasgow with my friend Colin. And then I made up this whole thing behind it. Like I lied about someone being annoyed they were in the video. And then I came up with this whole kind of story arc and we made all these videos about like me calling the person out and then there was a dance off and all that sort of stuff. That's my, one of my regrets is not video and all the stuff that went behind that. That's the most creative I think I've ever been prior to this because I was getting to do more than one thing. I was getting to play music, I was getting to draw stuff, I was getting to make videos, I was getting to do, like come up with ideas of how to get those across and all that sort of stuff. Besides that, this is the most creative I think I've ever been. Also the most happy with what I'm producing. So I'm just gonna keep going, that's, that's it. I'm gonna keep going the way I'm gonna go. I'm not worrying about numbers, considering some of the stuff that's went down in 2020, I'm re I'm really happy with what this this has happened. Don't know. Everyone this year has had something. Some folk have had some really bad things happen. But my family's safe. Uh, I'm not the richest I've ever been. I'm not the most financially secure. The most financially secure I've ever been in my life. I was also miserable <laughs> by the end up. So I'm not the most financially secure I've ever been in my life. But I am the happiest. I have been with this aspect of my life, with making stuff. So, long may it continue. And without getting too preachy, the reason I'm talking about stuff like this is because I think a lot of people do worry about that sort of thing. And I've had people go, how many subscribers have we got? And I tell them, and they'll go, hmm. And you're like, <laughs> you haven't even watched a video. You're like, you've never, you've never sat and watched anything I do, and you've based whether I'm good or not on a number. That's bad man, that is a horrible way to be. Think about the amount of things that you're missing out on because you're looking at the number. It's mental, don't, don't, I, I'm not thinking about that number. I'm just making stuff and I'm enjoying it. Next, I've hit my, my path, my, my road, I'm on it. I'm on the track, I know what I'm doing now, right? It took, like when you look at the beginning of the playlist, it's kind of sporadic, right? But I've got, the Chasing the Walrus thing is going to be a playlist. I'm going to be working on that. I'm going to be working on the Tragical Mystery Tour. That's still going to be happening. I know the other stuff, like the commissions and all these other things that I'm making videos about and all that kind of thing. Um, that's what's next, is that, is just doing that uh, and putting stuff out there and letting folk know that I can do these things and that I enjoy doing these things and etc. etc. I hope you've enjoyed the lecture. That's what it's been. It's been a lecture. Don't let the fact that I'm wearing a public enemy shirt fool you. This was a lecture. I should have been wearing a tweed jacket with pads kind of thing, then you would have known, oh, he's got to teach me something. That's it, like, that's my, that, that's that been my my first year on YouTube. It's been great. It, it's very difficult to look at your bank account and look at the stuff that you're doing that makes you money and stuff like that, and then go, ah, but I kind of really want to do this. Like, it's scary. It's scary. There has been a few points this year, but there's been some great points, like I moved out the garage, I'm in here now. Like, that's amazing. I am so grateful that that stuff's happened. But there has been a few bits where I'm looking at things going, Maybe not, maybe put the editing away for a day, like that. But we've, we've all got that. The goal is, I know what my goal, my goals are for next year. I know what my goals are for next year. None of them involve numbers. The path I'm choosing is a grind. I am well aware of that, right? And that's fine. I'd much rather, John Lennon said, it's better to be at the bottom of a ladder you want to climb than halfway up one you don't. I could have totally got that wrong. It was in the office. I heard it in the office. I didn't hear it directly for John Lennon. And I made this video because there might be people watching this right now that are thinking, I quite, I would quite like to make videos and stuff like that. Go do it. Go do it. There'll be people, like I've had some negative comments. I've had people passing judgment on my accent and I've people saying I talk too much. I like it. I like doing this and I'm not going to um, have one person's opinion change what I want to do. So, like, I'll take on, I'll take criticism on board. Maybe I do talk too much. I can't do anything about my accent. Like, I can't do anything about that. This is me. Anyway, I am rambling. I do talk too much. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. You can get me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Mr. Tragic O'Hara. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you learned something, hit the subscribe button. And that's it. And uh, next time, don't know. <laughs>